We have Raw to talk about the world famous Raw Report. And I enjoyed this show greatly. Thought there was good storytelling and uh, and some good wrestling on this show. Much, much better than usual, in fact. So first we had Sammy coming out, and uh, Sammy is sad that his friend has been drafted to SmackDown. Their team has been split up in this non-existent draft. And he is so sad about it, and he's got to thinking that the only reason this happened was because Jey Uso got drafted to Raw or whatever they... They just took him, I guess, even though he'd quit. So he's all sad, and then the Judgment Day comes out, and they threaten to beat his ass. And, of course, his friend Jay comes down with a chair, and he helps protect his friend Sammy. So afterwards, Sammy's in the back, and he's all depressed. Jay says, what's up, dude? And Sammy says, I want to be, I want to be happy. I want to be happy for you. I want us to be good. But man, you came and saved the day you handed me that chair. And all I could think was this should be Kevin. But he's not here anymore because of you. Apparently Jay involuntarily manslaughtered poor Kevin Owens. Everything is great for you, he says. You got everything going for you. Cody, the tag titles, your friend. But I have nothing because of you. Jay says, man, you still got me. And then he's, he leaves. And then Sammy gets all mad. He shoves down a ladder and he goes and he finds him. And he says, listen, it's been a tough week. I'm happy for you. I'm sorry. I just want to know if we're good. And Jay gives him a big hug. And then Jay says, I got something to calm you down. And off they go to be calmed down. As Mike starts dr- Oh, I thought it was liquor you were drinking over there. Something to calm you down. Then we had Nakamura. Ricochet. Falls count anywhere. And uh, the match was good. They had a good falls count anywhere match. Uh, Nakamura ended up winning with a Kinshasa on the outside after sending Ricochet off the post through a table outside. Ricochet did like the shooting star off the balcony onto 10 security guards. And they did all sorts of crazy stuff, including Nakamura taking this man into the center of the ring putting him on his shoulders, and hitting the most obvious, you-can't-miss-it, GTS, which got absolutely no reaction whatsoever from these fans. Not a CM Punk chant. Not a Kenta chant. They just didn't care. (laughs) Because the WWE universe was going to start chanting for Kenta. You never know. I maybe never know what these people are going to chant. Maybe that's the reason that Nakamura is doing the move. It's more, you know, because Kenta is letting him do it or whatever it is. I mean, there was that punk Kenta Maybe Kenta's going to so. get mad at him next. Maybe Nakamura's just added it to his offense, and there's like there's no more depth to it than that. It's got a new name, by the way. A knee to the jaw! That's what it's called. By the way, Michael Cole was gone. And so we had uh, Wade Barrett and uh, that other bloke, Kevin Patrick. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, as they noted, the first time ever in the history of Raw that there was not one American voice in the announce team, which did, in fact, lead to people there saying, well, that's proof Vince is gone. He never would have allowed two accents at the same time in his booth. We had Piper and Natty. And uh, I thought I, I thought I knew where this was going. I figured, okay, well, Natty wins. Then her and Tegan are going to challenge for the tag titles. But in fact, uh, Chelsea interfered and Piper pinned Natty. But then they beat down Natty and Tegan made the save. And they had done a segment earlier with Tegan and Chelsea. So I guess they're just going to do the 50-50 thing where, you know, Piper wins this one. Tegan wins the other one next week over Chelsea. Because Chelsea never wins. I don't think she's won maybe a single match. Except maybe when Piper got the win. And then we set up our tag. Are are Tegan and Natalia officially a team? What does officially even mean? Do they have matching gear? I mean, they basically Natty has said, "I'm here for you." I'll, Jesus, I'll, they're okay, they're a team. Gotcha. They're a team, but I don't know if they're like officially a team. I don't know if they've gotten certified. I don't know if they've trademarked Tegan and Natty for wrestling purposes. Can you do that? By the way, I don't know. Not a tag team expert. Did you reach out to a lawyer? Priest? Uh, no, I thought they'd come to me. I was wrong. Lawyers don't want anything to do with me. 
Priest met with Finn and Dom. I should have not said that, huh? Priest met with Finn and Dom, and Priest says, you know, I was so happy to see JD get his ass kicked last week. But then I saw Drew beat his ass so bad I felt bad for the guy. So I think we need to take out old Drew. And Dom says, no, Mommy says we can't go after Drew. And so Rhea then immediately shows up. And Priest says, man, you've been making a lot of calls lately. She goes, I'm, I'm, I'm handling business. Don't worry about it. You guys go win the tag team titles. So they are teasing that she is trying to get Drew to join the Judgment Day. We had... Actually, they did do an angle once where a team had to register as a tag team. There was a registration process. Did you know that to become a team? There's a registration process. Seth came out. And I swear to God, he was dressed like Hanalei dresses when she dresses herself. He's just wearing some outfit. I think he had like those Eclipse glasses on or something. So Drew then comes out. And uh, as preposterous as Seth dresses and all this stupid stuff, they had a great back and forth. And essentially, Drew is just still angry. He cannot get over the Judgment Day. That's the storyline. And everybody's telling him, you got to get over it. And he keeps bringing up, I listen... You're not the one who almost had the title won in front of 50,000 people, and then the bloodline just snatched it away from me. So, no, I'm not over it yet. And Seth bows at the pay-per-view. I am going to beat you, and it's going to be the best thing that ever happened to you because for the first time in a long time, you're going to have nobody to blame but yourself. Now Drew's really angry. We had clips of Logan Paul calling out Rey Mysterio. So uh, they're going to wrestle at Crown Jewel, and Logan Paul's probably winning the title, would be my guess. Then we had Johnny Gargano and Ludwig Kaiser. They had a very good match. And uh, this was a tough crowd, but, like, the guys who could do good matches, they all got the crowd into it by the end. And uh, Johnny and Kaiser, all sorts of big moves. And then finally, Vinci, whose job is to not screw up. Well, first he uh, he tried to help, and then... Kaiser shoved him down, and then Johnny hit his finish, but as the ref is counting, Kaiser sneaks over and pokes him in the eye, and so uh, Kaiser ends up getting the DDT and pinning him, which leads to an angle later. We had a segment where Indy goes up to Becky and says, why haven't you given an opportunity to the woman who never lost the title? And uh, I am the biggest fan of NXT there is, and for the life of me, I was baffled. Like, who are you talking about? Well, it turns out she was talking about herself because she never lost the NXT title. And so they actually set up a match I am not making up. Becky Lynch versus Indy Hartwell live on Raw. Well, on NXT last week, they made it. It was almost heelish the way that Indy went about it. But now that I guess Vince is out and Johnny Gargano and Indy and Candice and who knows, maybe even uh, old Dexter Loomis, old creepy face himself there, you know, maybe they're all back together again. Maybe we see Indy take the title from Becky Lynch or maybe not. And then we add uh, Drew running into Sammy. And they get into another deal, and Drew says, you know, I've had something I've wanted to tell you for a while, which is that, you know, you also left the bloodline, but you proved yourself, and uh, you stepped up. You're a leader in the back now. And Sammy's thanking him when Drew goes, ah, I wasn't done yet. I was going to tell you that, but then you just go forgive this guy for everything he did. And Sammy's arguing that, dude, like, he's proven himself. Everyone here trusts this guy, everybody except you. And Drew says, no offense, but you can't relate to any of this because you've never been a world champion. So now Sammy's very upset, and he challenges him to a match next week on Raw to prove he is world championship caliber. I like where this could be going because you want to keep the Judgment Day strong. And you know Damian Priest at some point is going to be a big baby face once he gets out of that group and a challenger for Roman Reigns, at the very least for Gunther, but probably for Roman Reigns. Well, in that case, how do you keep him strong? you got to substitute him with somebody, because J.D. McDonough, no offense, isn't going to do it. Drew McIntyre is the perfect person, and frankly... 
in the way this is going, Drew McIntyre taking the title off of Seth Rollins and then at some point maybe losing it to Sami Zayn, not the worst idea in the world because Sami Zayn on one of those nights at WrestleMania as the champion or winning the championship, hey, you know, it's not last year. You, you missed your shot that way, but they would still make a lot of people very happy. Then we had Rhea Ripley and Shayna. It's a good match, and they did some interesting stuff. Rhea sold a ton for her, and she finally goes for the Riptide, but Shayna reverses a Riptide into an armbar. Rhea power bombs her way out, and then we had some stuff happening. Nia runs down. Raquel runs down. Zoe runs down. We have this wild multi-person brawl. Zoe then just gets in the ring and boots Rhea for the DQ. But then she saves Rhea. And then she clears the ring of everybody. And essentially this was just a setup for a fatal five-way with all of those women coming up at Crown Jewel. Zia Lee wants a shot at Becky. You know that same Zia Lee we haven't seen in like eight months? She wants her shot. And then we had uh, Bronson Reed and Gunther. Golly gee, did I love this match. And these guys are great because they got 14 minutes, and they just slowly built their way up. And it's heel versus heel. First couple minutes, they're just kind of doing stuff. Crowd's just kind of sitting there. Then they start hitting each other a little harder. Then the crowd's like, huh, whoa, what's this? Then they start doing big moves, and the crowd's like, oh, man, what the hell's happening here? And then they're pounding on each other. And Bronson's, his chest is all hamburgered up. And then finally they get the big stuff at the end, which is Bronson almost killing this poor guy with a DVD. And then he goes for a senton, but Gunther gets his knee up. They fight up top. Bronson gives him a top rope superplex, which somehow did not break the ring. The place went crazy for that. He goes for his splash. He misses. Gunther then hits his splash. Everybody thinks it's over, but Bronson kicks out. And then Gunther power bombs this guy, power bomb Bronson Reed, pinned him. I loved it. It was everything I wanted in a match with these two blokes. Then Miz was humiliated. That was good. Next week it's Alpha Academy versus the New Day. We had Gunther congratulating Kaiser, but then he buried Giovanni. And he says, next week it's Giovanni versus Johnny. And I want Gargano stretchered out. And if that doesn't happen, Kaiser, it's your fault. So now Kaiser's all worried. And then the main event was Cody and Jay versus Priest and Finn for the tag team titles. Another very good match. Notably, Cody hit that 1D gimmick and didn't land on his head for the first time in three shows. That was good. They got the heat on him for a while, and then uh, and then Jay made the hot tag, and Dom starts interfering. They start doing the entire thing, and Jay dives onto him. He eats a sling blade. Finn misses the stomp. He spears Jay, or he spears Priest. He spears uh, Finn. And then finally he goes up top, and there's one more guy. His own brother shows up, super kicks Jay. Finn hits the coup de grace, gets the pin, new tag team champions. Roman told Jimmy on SmackDown, you got to solve this Cody and, and Jay problem. And he did. He fell in line. And that was the show. Thought it was great. We had some neighbors. They had a little horse. One day the horse disappeared, and we didn't know if they sold it or ate it. <laughs> I think it was ate it. I used to go over there and spend the night with the girls. I was quite a bit Did you ever eat dinner there? No. The girls, the twins, they met, they'd met this father and son. And oh, no. One of them married the father, and the other married the son. Can you imagine how different ways they are related? The, the I, daughters, I actually can't. That was a weird bunch. The dad was a uh, stepdad to the girls, and they got, got kind of familiar once in a while. <laughs> what? Move on. Go. <laughs> Don't. Just go. He's was having a cow, too. not inbred? <laughs> anyway, we used to have to churn butter. Are you having fun, Wendy? I don't know. I honestly don't know. <laughs> hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.